En question. Please be seated. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Reprise de l'audience. The chamber now decides on the, La chambre the request se by sur the parties. The chamber decides to admit into evidence uh, the book requested le, by the uh, expert to TCE 81. De l'expert uh, de TC 81. Ce document porte la cote. E3 slash 10677. E3 barre 10677. The chamber also admits the la two uh, pages uh, request by the defense team for Kyo Sampon and the year and number for the document is Ce document portera la cote. that is the uh, page for the year and number is 0133084724848 and the document is uh, designated 48. as E3 slash one zero six seven six. Which will be the cut E three bar ten six hundred sixty six. Regarding another request, the chamber will issue its decision in due course. L'autre demande, la chambre rendra sa décision en temps utile. And uh, court officer, please invite the expert to TCE eighty one. TCE eighty one. President, good morning, Madame Expert. What Bonjour, is your Madame name? Expert. Quel est votre nom? My full name is Peggy Levine. Mon nom complet est Peggy Levine. Bah, Okun. Thank you. And when were Le you président, born? merci. Quand êtes-vous né? I was born on the twenty first of January, nineteen fifty two. Je suis né le vingt et un janvier, mille neuf cent cinquante deux. Bah, aucun hay l'autre hay mien sentir And what is your nationality? Le président, quelle est votre nationalité? I have two nash. Two nationalities, uh, Australian and the United States. Australian and American. Thank you. And uh, where is merci. your permanent address? Permanent address is in 
Victoria, Australia. Victoria, Australia. Thank you. And uh, what is your current occupation? Question. Merci. Quelle est votre profession à l'heure actuelle? My current occupation Réponse. has a number of roles. I'm a registered clinical functions. psychologist and clinical supervisor so in Australia and New Zealand. En Australie et I'm en also an anthropologist with a specialization in medical anthropology. En anthropology medical. I'm an associate professor at Monash University and the University of Melbourne, where I supervise primarily PhD Melbourne students. Où, uh, Jean I'm also a permanent research affiliate en PhD. with the Shoah Foundation at the Center for Advanced Genocide Studies en recherche affilié au, à la Shoah in Los Foundation. Angeles à Los Angeles, au Centre d'études avancées sur le génocide. Bah. Thank you, uh, madame. And uh, what religion Question. do you follow? Merci, madame. Quelle est votre religion? I have no religion, however, Réponse. I honor my Jewish ancestors. Je ne pratique aucune religion, mais toutefois, j'honore mes ancêtres juifs. Bah, on... Thank you. Le président, merci. Le greffier a fait un rapport report this morning that to your best knowledge. Ce matin, you are not related by blood or by law to any of the two accused. Or through any of the civil parties. Is that correct? Are you related or not to any of the two accused or to any of the civil parties in this case? I am not related avec les accusés ou les partis civils en l'espèce Réponse non. Je n'ai aucun lien avec eux. Thank you. Le Président, merci. And, uh, Mr. Levine, pursuant to Rule 9.31.2 of the ECCC Internet Rule, in your capacity as an expert to testify before this chamber, you are required to take an oath or to make an affirmation according to your religion before your testimony. Do you consent to that? Et ce avant votre déposition, êtes-vous d'accord? Êtes-vous prête à le faire? La réponse oui. Je le suis. And uh, Greffier. Le président. Madeleine, Madeleine, please proceed Madame with the uh, process of taking an oath for the expert. You may proceed. Vous avez la parole. Good morning, expert. Bonjour, Can you please stand up and repeat after me? Et après moi. I solemnly je swear that I will assist the trial chamber honestly, confidentially, and to the best of my ability. I solemnly swear that I will assist the trial chamber honestly, donc, j'apporterai mon concours à la Chambre de première instance, okay. fidèlement, confidentiellement et au mieux de mes compétences. Merci. Je vous remercie. Puis-je m'asseoir Le Président, merci, Madame l'Expert. The chamber and the uh, parties would like to thank you for coming here to testify, which will assist the uh, chamber in ascertaining the truth in relation to important matters before this chamber as well as for the Cambodian people. The chamber would like now to ask you uh, some questions in relation to your academic background and uh, your work. Madame Levine, could you describe to Madame the uh, chamber Levine, your academic background? With regard to my réponse. education, concerne, I have a Bachelor of Science in Sociology that I received from Virginia Tech University in 1974. I have a Master's of Psychology Tech degree that I received in 1976 from Pepperdine University in California. I have a Doctorate of Education um, primarily in Psychology with Trauma and Culture Specialization that I received from Virginia Tech University in Virginia in the United States in 1984. And then I have a doctorate of philosophy in medical anthropology that I received from Monash University in 2007.
บ่าออก Thank you and uh, have you been to Cambodia before and if so uh, when did that happen and for what purpose et pour quelle raison I first came to Cambodia in late 1995 and then again in early 1996. I was invited by Ms. Hema Yang, who at the time was the chair of psychology at the Royal University of Phnom Penh. That was my first time inside Cambodia. Did you uh, stay and uh, worked in uh, Cambodia? And if so, uh, when and how long did you stay? Pardon, I didn't get the beginning of your question. You were invited uh, to Cambodia in relation to a university, and the chairman would like to ask whether you came to work in Cambodia for a certain period of time, and if so, how long did you work in Cambodia and the purpose of the work? My, my initial time in Cambodia was um, short. I don't have my passport history with me. I believe I was here for two weeks in that first instance. I came specifically to learn what was happening at the university. I would like to say as background, um, Ms. Hema had come to Australia on an Oz Aid scholarship. She was a student of mine in one of my classes that I taught in cross-cultural psychology. She was trying to bring cross-cultural psychology practices into Cambodia. And so my reason for initially coming to Cambodia was to have discussions with her and her faculty and to meet her students and to talk to her about the future development of her program. Thank you. So far, have you done some studies on research in relation to Cambodia? in particular in relation to the regime of Democratic Cambodia? Yes. <laughs> that research I stumbled into, I would say, as a result of my association with colleagues um, inside Cambodia. But my first, my, my first personal inquiry into Cambodia and Democratic Kampuchea and things that happened during that time was in 1980. I was working at a mental health center in Arlington, Virginia, near Washington, D.C., as a clinician. And at that time, my clients were refugees coming into the United States. And it was through my association with my clients that I started to read about, ponder about things that happened in Cambodia. And it was the first time I started hearing about weddings. I did not start my formal research until after I came to Cambodia in 1997 is when I started my formal investigation into this project. And can you tell the chamber the, the reasons why you uh, decide to write about uh, marriage in Cambodia? And how much time did you spend on the researching this issue in Cambodia? The total of eight years I spent on this topic. Um, So difficult to decide where to start. I'm going to start with my association at the Royal University of Phnom Penh because that's when I, that's when the seeds were planted for me to begin doing this research. I, was, I had met with colleagues and one of my colleagues, um, I had a lunch with him and his wife from the university. 
and they were quite affectionate with each other and quite kind to each other. And in that lunch, I asked them how they met, and they told me that they met um, during the Khmer Rouge period and that they were married in that time. And I'm the one that used the word forced. I said, oh, you were married in the forced weddings. And the, the couple said, no, our weddings weren't forced. And that really confounded me because up until that moment, Everything I had read about the weddings had led me to believe that they were forced. Um, so then, moving a little bit forward, I had met people at Takmao because, again, I was a clinician and I started doing some consultation at Chumnis Hospital in Takmao, um, a center that Dr. Bumi. C'est un centre avec le docteur Bumi, un centre dirigé par le docteur Bumi. J'ai rencontré d'autres collègues là-bas qui, incidemment, m'ont parlé des mariages. Et leur histoire est semblable à celui du couple que j'ai rencontré à l'université. Je pense donc que ma première entrée dans cette étude formelle consistait à me reconnaître en question that the weddings were forced. So I went into the literature and I did a very, um, a very thorough investigation into the literature of any time that word was used. I went into historical documents, um, socio-political commentaries, biographies, sensationalist journal journalism, and even some documentary films. And what I found was the word was often being used, and when there was sampling involved, the sampling was often biased. So then I thought, oh, this is a very big topic, <laughs> and I want to know more about it, um, and I want to do a bit of immersion on this topic, and I want to understand the structure and the function and the meaning of the weddings across time and place. It, uh, as, as if I were a cartographer, I wanted to map what happened with this phenomenon that we call weddings under DK. Um, so that was, that was the first bit of research I did into those documents. And then I decided to study the tradition of weddings in Cambodia. And I did that by going into many, many old documents. I spent quite, my, my speaking of French is not very good at all, but my reading is still pretty good. So I, I went to the French Cultural Center and spent many hours there going over many, many documents, um, looking at cartographers' work, um, looking at Delaporte's work from um, 1893 when he was creating an atlas. Um, and those who were coming to Cambodia for many different region, reasons were documenting their observations of traditional wedding practices. Um, so I again immersed myself in that. I started to attend traditional weddings in, in Cambodia so I could get an understanding of weddings. I spent a lot of time trying to map the weddings before 1970, before the Law Nol regime, because I was aware by talking to, again, colleagues at the beginning before I started my formal research. I was aware that 1970 was a very profound time of change in this country. And during those times of profound change, people were being moved out of some rural regions and going into the city to study, and rituals were changing a bit. Um, in 1970, so I, I stayed with looking at documents before 1970. Uh, and then that led me to my, my study where I decided to go back and do a second doctorate on this topic so that I could get ethics clearance, um, so that I could really think through duty of care, confidentiality. I did not want to be associated with an NGO or any government organization. I independently funded my research. Um, I wanted to have the capacity to have the time so I could immerse myself in this study. And I got a scholarship to do a PhD. I started that PhD at University of Victoria in New Zealand. Um, admittedly, things happened in the department. My two supervisors left their positions. And at that time, David Chandler was returning to Australia from the United States. And he was a professor at Monash University 
moving into retirement, but I approached him about my topic and asked him if he would consider taking me on halfway through my doctoral work as a student de en cours um, so that he could be my supervisor and he agreed to that and so I transferred my PhD to Monash University which meant that my work needed to go through ethics clearance again um, to make sure that it was reliable and that it was a valid culturally reliable study. Thank you. And uh, Madam Expert, regarding Merci. the topic of your Madame doctoral Expert, thesis, can you tell the chamber the title of that uh, doctoral thesis? De cette thèse. And the book that you refer to for Et your thesis? Auquel vous faites référence pour votre thèse. Uh, the title of my PhD Réponse study is A Contextual Study into the Weddings and Births under the Khmer Rouge, under the, Khmer Rouge the Ritual de Revolution. De ritual revolution. Um, admittedly, as a result of immersing myself in the Cette research in weddings and traveling with people to locations where they were wed, I discovered many things about the births and decided to then include that, extend my PhD time so that I could study the births as well during that period. The book that I did that came out of that PhD um, is titled Love and Dread in Cambodia, Weddings, Births, and Ritual Harm under the Khmer Rouge. It was published with the National University of Singapore Press in conjunction with the University of Washington Press. I deliberately chose a university press that had a, an independent international review process of my work before it could be considered for publication. Thank you. And in your uh, thesis, that is your doctoral thesis in relation Merci. to a wedding and birth under the Khmer Rouge regime, can you tell the chamber whether you received any support from any organization or any individual? I was on a scholarship for my PhD, but it was up to me to determine how to spend that. I lived on that scholarship um, and used that scholarship money to do my own research. I do have a clinical private practice. At times, I would use my own clinical private practice funding to fund my time in Japan, I mean, sorry, my time in Cambodia. During that time that I was doing my research, I did um, take on a position for a little less than two years as a full professor in Japan, um, where I um, taught a number of things. Um, and during that time when I was in Japan, I applied for grant money for travel, and I did receive grant money to allow me to travel to Cambodia. That's the scope of the funding that I had received. Thank you. President, merci. And can you also tell the chamber the sources that you refer to for writing your doctoral thesis? And also please tell the chamber how many people and who they were that you made for the purpose of writing your thesis? Um, so the number of, of formal respondents that I had for my study was 192. However, I, I did not include people in my formal study that I spoke to when I went to villages. For example, um, when I was in the second stage, second, third stage, second probably stage of my study, when I was trying to document ethnographically wedding rituals, birth rituals, when I would go to a village to do a formal interview, I would oftentimes speak to elders in that 
that village and have them describe to me the rituals from times before 1970, and I would record those rituals, and that was part of my ritual collection, but that was not a sample that I used for my formal study into the mapping of weddings under DK. With regard to the bibliography, I, I honestly have to say, but I can get the court this information after the break, I have not counted the documents that are in my doctoral thesis. Um, I'm sure there's hundreds, but I can calculate that for you. I would like to let the president know that I have traveled to Cambodia with all of my hard data with me. That which is in the back of my thesis of the 192 people that were part of my formal sample, I have a synopsis in the back of my thesis. I did want my research to be as transparent as possible, but if there is a question that I am asked, that is not in this document here today, and if I'm a little bit uh, sketchy about my response, I can crunch those numbers for the court um, with my hard data that I brought. My hard data, I've also brought my videotapes and my audio tapes with me. And I hope I've answered your full question. Thank you, Madame Lewan. It is now convenient time for our uh, lunch break. Uh, the chamber will take a break now and uh, resume at 1.30 this afternoon in order to continue our uh, proceedings. Court officer, please assist the expert at the waiting room reserves for uh, experts and witnesses and invite her back into the courtroom at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are instructed to take you some pawn to the waiting room downstairs and have them returned to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court is now in recess.